Thank you so much for, uh, for, for allowing us to present and showcase our work. We are the West Texas Aerospace and Defense Manufacturing Coalition led by uh, University of Texas, El Paso. Our coalition has long, we have been working on last five years and it is uh, really uh, designed to address a, both national and as well as regional challenges. Uh, many of you already know that our aerospace and defense manufacturing ecosystem is now in a tipping point. Many of the small and medium manufacturers, those are the lifeline for our defense manufacturing ecosystem, are disappearing very, very fast. Many offshoring and other, uh, other dynamics actually uh, destroyed many of our defense manufacturing base. We're in a, such a critical situation that we must rebuild uh, America's manufacturing, especially that manufacturing that can support U.S. aerospace and defense coalition, defense uh, ecosystem. There are a lot of global dynamics in terms of defense manufacturing, and we must address those challenges. And the, the core of this uh, project uh, is to address these national issues. Second, we are El Paso and West Texas. The West Texas, the urban core is El Paso, and uh, rest of the areas are rural. We are, a, we are an area of 1 million people. 84% are Hispanic, 20% is in rural area. Uh, the soul of our proposal is to really achieve equity in American prosperity. This 1 million people deserve the same amount of America's prosperity that other affluent area uh, enjoy. So El Paso and this area uh, really grew up manufacturing. But we build on manufacturing on uh, low tech manufacturing. And when NAFTA came, it overnight uh, eliminated 30,000 jobs from our community. And we never got those jobs back. We are home of one of the largest military base uh, with, a Fort, uh, uh, with a, uh, uh, Fort Bliss, as well as many of the military installation. Despite, but even during the NAFTA job losses and eliminating many manufacturers, we still have over 500 small and medium manufacturers that survived. And they are very resilient and they, are, they have a very strong base. They even survived COVID. While all those things are happening, University of Texas El Paso, the, probably the only minority university in the, in the country that achieved a research one, in, one status has over 85% of minority students. It actually developed two massive research center. One is the aerospace center. Another one is, a, is an advanced manufacturing center. Our goal at that point was very simple. Taking kids from El Paso and this area zip code, whose family make less than $40,000 and put them in an aerospace and defense system where they personally can make more than 80,000. And we were extremely su successful. Last decade, aerospace center put over 800 people in aerospace and defense ecosystem. Uh, almost 240 students now works for F-35, uh, our nation's really flagship uh, uh, fighter aircraft program. So we have proved that with the right opportunity, we can do things. So what makes us believe that we could be a big player in uh, aerospace and defense manufacturing? It rooted that we have 300 very capable manufacturing. If you try to build 300 manufacturing from from scratch, it will take decades to do that. But with a program and added capacity, we can in a less than five years, we can put a majority of them to support aerospace and defense manufacturing. Along with us, we with major aerospace and defense contractor came to assist us, including Lockheed Martin, of course, one of the biggest supporters for our program, Blue Origin, and many, many other small defense contractor came to help us. And so with this, we have been working on taking those 300 manufacturers and do the capacity improvement, do the foundational infrastructure improvement so that they can be big piece of US man aerospace and defense manufacturing. So our project is very interwing. All the components are interwing to achieve a one vision. And that vision is actually building the aerospace and defense manufacturing based on our existing manufacturing ecosystem. We're really focused on Primary metal manufacturing right now, if you look at the recent uh, report came out uh, in response to President Biden's 
uh, Executive Order 14017, duly identified primary manufacture, primary metal manufacturing, especially forging and casting, one of the really, really critical area and has a lot of vulnerability in the future. So we must build those areas. So what is our approach is that we have an acceleration trap. So that means we take 300 manufacturer and try to address their barriers to into the aerospace and defense manufacturing ecosystem. So as you can see that it's, we are building a purpose built manufacturing setup. So we're bringing a manufacturing campus, advanced manufacturing campus that has all the cyber physical infrastructure that allow our small and medium manufacturer to quickly get into aerospace and defense ecosystem. This is a purpose-built manufacturing campus while our existing manufacturer either relocate or expand to support the manufacturing ecosystem. Simultaneously, we are, we are putting together a large, very, very large training center. These are just in time training center, taking people who are not right now part of the STEM ecosystem, kind of like democratizing the talent ecosystem and bringing people uh, this ecosystem through short term training. For instance, Blue Origin needs 200 tech for West Texas test facility. There's no idea there's 200 uh, a technician could be fine. But we have 19,000 transitioning soldiers coming from, uh, from Fort Bliss every year. We could take, and we already have pilot program doing that, take those, take those uh, uh, transitioning soldiers and veterans and quickly train them to support aerospace and defense ecosystem. With that, I'm just gonna stop and let you uh, ask me a question. Thank you so much.